Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight for what you were thinking. Tonight we have a very special guest with us for your viewing pleasure. He is the promised one. He is a teacher, a guide, a good friend of those who know God. He is the revelation of all things righteous and of the truth. He is our comfort. He is the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, welcome to our show. I wait to be invited. If I am invited, I will come in and I will sup with you. I will make my abode with you and I will be in you and I will reveal myself unto those who seek me. Holy Spirit, please tell us what your position is in the Godhead. And could you please explain who you actually are? I am the third person of the Trinity, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We three are one. We are the same. We are God. Holy Spirit, how can there be three gods in one God? Please explain. I will make it as simple as I can. God is the giver, Jesus is the doer, and I am the power that makes it happen. Three in one, but one in the same. If you ask anything in prayer of the Lord your God, Jesus goes to the Father and he says, Father, this one who has asked for this request, Father, may I give it to them in the authority of your name? The Father says, yes, you may give it to them. You have my authority to do so. Jesus then comes to me, the Holy Spirit, and he says, the Father has authorized me to give this person, this thing, Holy Spirit, make it happen. And I do as he asks of me. And that person receives from God what he or she has asked for. We are the Godhead, the three-in-one, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of reference in the scriptures, Holy Spirit, of your being a ghost, a spirit. Why are you referred to as such? I am called the Holy Ghost, for I cannot be seen. I am invisible to the human eye, for I am of spirit form, and as a spirit, I am as the wind. No one knows where the wind comes from or where it goes to. It can only be felt. I come and I go as the wind, and I touch whom I wish to touch. I am Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what is your prime objective? Objective is to perform the will of the One, of God. My purpose is to teach, to guide, to comfort, to reveal the truth and to empower the children of God to be their friend, to release my power through them and into them, to perform the explicit will of the One God. I was and I am and I always will be, from everlasting to everlasting, even unto the end of the earth. Holy Spirit, Upon our acceptance of salvation, freely given us by Jesus Christ, you then are sent by the Father to dwell within each of us. How can we be sure you are in us? I reveal myself in many ways. I am the still small voice that guides you into all truths. I am he who reveals the Father unto you, and he who releases my spiritual gifts unto you, so that you may become edified in righteousness and in truth. It is I who empowers you to become holy and enables you to stand in your salvation. You will know I am in you, for you will feel my presence within. Holy Spirit, what is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? Hear, O Israel! Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is an unforgivable sin. All other sins will be forgiven of you, even taking the Lord's name in vain, which also should not be done. This too may be forgiven, but to blaspheme knowingly against the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven. To blaspheme the Holy Ghost is to attribute something to the Holy Ghost that is not of his doing. If it is of me, it will bear fruit. If it is not of me, it will amount to nothing, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. My works are self-evident, and they are of the truth, and the truth shall be revealed in light. What place hath the darkness in light? For I am of the light, and I am holy. Holy Spirit, why does the Bible say that you do not bear the sword in vain? I am the supreme power of holiness. I can give, or I can take away. I can create, or I can destroy. I can bless, or I can afflict. I can keep you within the borders of righteousness, or I can let you wander from your borders, to your own destruction. I perform the will of the triune God. We are one, and we agree as one. I bear the sword, for I am the defender of righteousness and of the children of God. Holy Spirit, 
In Paul's letter to the Romans, the Apostle said that you make yourself known at all times through groanings that cannot be understood. What exactly is he saying? He's simply saying that although you may not understand, the Spirit does. At times you will hear groans, even loud outbursts, as vessels are being filled or cleansed by the Spirit. Be not afraid of these things, for they are needful. One may become intoxicated in the Spirit as well as my presence overwhelms them, or they may laugh uncontrollably or weep. There too may be shaking of the body. One may feel heat or cold. These things bring spiritual growth, renewal, and refreshing and comfort. It is a way that the Spirit gives or takes away, the things He wants you to have or be rid of. Holy Spirit will never harm you nor embarrass you in any way. I am He who is sent to be your friend, and I am a friend that sticks closer than a brother. For brother may turn against brother, but I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as my gifts to you are released in you, you shall be free. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Holy Spirit, it is stated in the Bible that you are represented in many ways. Fire, cloud, water, a dove, as by the wind, rain, thunder, and lightning, and so on. Can you show us an example of this, an example that you really captivated the interest of men? Behold! see you, what would you look like? I am the exact representation of the Father and of the Son. I am the Spirit of Truth and the power of God. We three are one, we are the same, for we are one. Hear, O Israel, we are one God. I was in the beginning and I am in the end. I am the only true God. I am not made of stone or sticks or metal that can one day be thrown into the fire and destroyed. That one day is and another day is not. I am the living God, and there is no other God but me, and you shall put no other gods before me. Love me with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your soul, and you shall walk in my favor. Holy Spirit, you do not seem to be mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible, only in the New Testament, and then only in the beginning of the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. Why is this? God seeking a better way for sacrifice of man's sins than that of the blood of animals, wanted the sacrifice to be one time for all time, with no need of further blood sacrifice. Jesus Christ, the elect, was without sin or blemish, so he sacrificed himself freely for all men, so that in simply asking in his name of, for forgiveness, one might receive the pardon of sin from the Almighty. After the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, Jesus ascended into paradise. Then I was sent to take care of those who would be children of God, those who would be saved from their sin. I was sent to guide them in all truths of God, to reveal the word and the unknown mysteries of the word to them, to keep them in the way that they should go, while yet teaching and guiding them in their salvation and relationship with God. Once I was sent, then all men had access to my anointing, causing spiritual growth, edification, renewal, and refreshing, enabling them to stand in their salvation. I am Holy Spirit. I am He who is sent, and I will remain in you. Holy Spirit, what is your anointing? My anointing comes through Jesus Christ. The more you worship Him, the more my anointing will flow. My anointing is my power. Power to save, heal, set free, disciple, and send. Power to take you from babes in Christ to make you warriors of God. Power that empowers you to perform the explicit will of God. We are the Trinity, the three in one. We are the same, for we are one. Holy Spirit, how do you keep the children of God within their borders of righteousness? I do so by showing them the difference between good and evil, right from wrong, through my presence in them. With no more than a whisper, I guide you to make the right choices, choices that lead to life and not death. If you disregard the guardian's voice, you are left to wander on your own, far from the safety of the fold. If I hear your bleeding, I will come for you and return you to the safety of the Good Shepherd's fold. Through their own convictions, the lost shall return if they call out to me. In my fold of safety, I will never leave you. And if you go astray, I will seek you out and I will find you. For I am the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. I am Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We are one. The way you know and the truth you know, walk ye in it. 
Holy Spirit, it has been said of some that you have a somewhat feminine nature. What is your answer to such conjecture? I would say to them, read the scriptures concerning creation. God created man in his own image. The word clearly describes God as he and as father. I am the third person of the Trinity, which is God. Any reference to my being of a feminine nature in the scriptures is only metaphorically spoken. It is only an example of the depth of the love and passion one feels towards God. In the only way they know how to describe how they felt. God is of the male gender. Man was created in God's image. Women was created from man. I am he who was sent. I am the power of the Almighty, and I am comfort to those in distress. Holy Spirit, how does one get to know you so that they know for certain that you are with them? Simply ask me to come, and I will come. Ask me to enter in, and I will enter in. You must open the door to receive me in, for the handle to your heart's door is on the inside. You must turn the handle, then I will come in, and I will sup with you, and I will make my abode in you if only that you bid me to come in. And there I will rain down upon you with my mercy and grace and my favor, and you shall be soaked in my blessings. Then I will send the latter rain, and you shall be renewed and refreshed because of me. Listen to my voice and learn to recognize my voice, for even the sheep of the pasture knows the shepherd's voice. I am the good shepherd, and you are my sheep. I will surround you in love, stay close to me, and you shall not fall, and you shall not fail. For I am with you always, even until the end of time. Holy Spirit, how do you delegate each person's calling in the ministry? I do so through their obedience. Obedience is the key that opens the door to ministry. Some are chosen by fellow colleagues, thinking that I have directed them to choose that individual for a particular ministry when I have not chosen them. These ministries will fall away by the roadside, for they are not un under my anointing. If I have chosen the individual, then they are anointed for the particular ministry I put them into. Their ministry then will blossom and bear much fruit, and every ministry will be self-evident, whether it is of me or of man. Is one ministry more important than the other? One ministry is not above another. An evangelist ministry is not above that of a deacon's, who greets people at the door. For all are equal in the sight of God, and the duties I put in their control are equally important in my sight. However, there are different offices of ministry, and I chose those best suited for each office. Those who may be more qualified for a particular ministry because they are more obedient, more knowledgeable, more well-versed in the word. Some give more of themselves than others do. I place each individual where they are most qualified and needed most if I put you into a ministry. How do we know what ministry we've been called to? Be assured you are where you should be. If you are not in a ministry, it could be that I am using you just where you are, through your witness to others, or through prayer. Many, many avenues that only you can do for those only you can reach. Or it may be because you are not yet ready, or because you are unwilling to minister. I am the Holy Ghost. I choose whom I will choose, and I send whom I will send. Holy Spirit, when the children of God fall into sin, where are you? I am Holy Spirit. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. When you fall, I am near unto you. If you call out to me, I will come, and I will bear you up, and I will lift you out of the mire. I see. I am holy. I will not look upon sin, nor will I participate in sin. But I wait for you to call, and I am as close as the calling of my name. And I will hear your cries, and I will come for you, and I will return you to the fold of safety. I am of the light and not of the darkness. Remain in me, and the darkness cannot touch you. Be ye holy, even as I am holy, and let your light so shine before men. Holy Spirit, when we as Christians are challenged by our peers, or those who are not Christians, when we are called hypocrites, or told we are not following the protocol that others assume we should be, when in fact we know we are following your directive, because we have followed the word of truth and are led by your guidance. And when what we are doing is bearing fruit, Holy Spirit, why do these things happen? These things happen because the favor of God is upon you. As it was when Abel was killed by Cain, Cain was jealous of the favor of God that was upon Abel. 
When David was told by his brother Eliab to lead the battlefield, he said to David, Go home and tend your father's sheep. Eliab was a seasoned warrior and David a mere boy. But Eliab saw that the favor of God was upon David, and Eliab's jealousy ruled his heart. Are there more examples? As to when Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, it was because of the favor of God upon Joseph. Not all will like you. Some may even hate you because the favor of God is upon you. They may ridicule you and try to hinder you, but when these things happen, do not take them to heart, but realize you are walking in God's favor, and because of that, you are and will be blessed, while yet they will reap the anger of God's vengeance. Really? God did not say life would always be easy. There will be times when trouble comes, but what God does say is that he will be there with you when trouble does come, and he will bring you through it. I am Holy Spirit. Put your trust in God and you shall never be ashamed for doing so. Holy Spirit, when these things do happen, and we do become discouraged, as many of us do, what would you say to help us through our discouragement? I would tell you to not be discouraged, but rather be encouraged. For I am he who has overcome the world. If you dwell in me, and I in you, I will be your strength. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Be strong in the Lord, and I will direct your path and you will be delivered from all your troubles. I am Holy Spirit, and I will strengthen you. Holy Spirit, how can you be in all of us at the same time? I am omnipresent, for I am the divine. I can be everywhere at the same time, in every individual at the same time. I seek whom I will, and I anoint whom I will. Remain in me, and I will pour out a blessing upon you that you cannot contain. I am the Holy Ghost, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and there is life, and life more abundant. Speaking of your anointing, Holy Spirit, what is it exactly, and how do we obtain it? My anointing is the release of my power onto you. To receive it, draw close to me, and I will draw close to you. The more you desire to be with me, the more my anointing will be given to you. The more that you worship your God, the more my anointing will flow onto you who are thirsty. Come and drink. Drink to your fill. He who drinks of this water shall never thirst again. I will pour water upon him who is thirsty. I will pour water upon the dry ground. Come, drink of me, remain in me, and you shall never thirst. Holy Spirit, why do people fall down when you touch them? They fall down because of the anointing. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When the flesh comes in contact with the pure holiness of my presence, it cannot stand before me, for I am holy. Some do not fall down. This may be due to that they are not open to receive. Others may also have a more seasoned acquaintance with my anointing, enabling them to receive the initial touch of my presence without falling. But whether they fall or do not fall, if they are receptive, they will receive me and of my anointing. Receptive in which way? If my power issues forth to protect as it did in the garden when Jesus was to be apprehended by the soldiers, then they may be as they and be knocked down flat. My power is overwhelming and unsurpassed. My anointing also may be overwhelming. As the flood of my anointing flows into any empty vessel, do not fear my anointing, but rather welcome it and receive of me, for it will bring refreshing to all who are willing to receive. Holy Spirit, I have just two more questions for you tonight. For a lot of time is quickly coming to an end for what you were thinking. Yet I have so much more that I would like to ask of you. First, would you be willing to return for another interview sometime in the future? It would certainly be our honor to have you. Always with you. I am as near as the calling of my name. If you invite me in, I will come. Secondly, Holy Spirit, what last words of advice would you say to us tonight? Come ye down to the river of my holiness. Bathe in my anointing. Jump right in. The water's fine. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for being with us and uh, on what you were thinking. It has indeed been an honor and our pleasure to have you here for such an in-depth and personal interview as we have had with you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big hand of applause to sweet breath of heaven, the power of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been our great pleasure to bring you this needful and important interview with the Holy Spirit. We certainly hope that it has been enlightening to you in revealing the mysteries that surround the Holy Ghost. Our answers were based on divine inspiration, 
prayer, collaboration with peers, and the written word of God, including in-depth research into Jewish records and the theology and various Christian theologians. We hope that our interview format has been made you know the Holy Spirit just a little bit better. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being our guest tonight on What You Were Thinking.